people. Bless these people of Ireland. I was involved in a case where I was um, imprisoned for singing a hymn about Jesus Christ. I was preaching and people didn't agree with what I was saying. So they called the guards, made a statement. The guards signed the statement. A number of different guards on a number of different days. Then a superintendent, I think it was the, was the level, um, or rank of the guard, I might be corrected on that, but a higher ranking guard was um, present when I was preaching and told me, even though I wasn't breaking the law, that I must desist or that I would be brought before a civil court on the basis that people had disagreed with what I was saying. I ended up in the civil court where the court found that I was antisocial. While they failed to say as to why they believed I was antisocial, they, 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 found, they said that the court found that I behaved in an antisocial manner. I asked the judge, did I have a reasonable excuse not to comply with this order? Being that I'm free to go, I'm not in any way made immure. I haven't been incarcerated. I'm still a free man in Ireland, which means I have a, a full spectrum of rights that every other man has. Did I have a reasonable excuse on that basis not to conform or comply with this civil order? The judge didn't answer that question, but said, um, that's a question for your solicitor, even though I was representing myself that day in court. I left that place knowing that I was free to go and that I was an Irish citizen with my full spectrum of rights. The civil order said that I couldn't speak and record. Um, speaking isn't a crime, recording isn't a crime. Neither of the activities that the civil order was attempting to ban me from are criminal activities. And nothing about what I said was uh, found by the court to be obscene. So they had absolutely no grounds to ban me and they had no grounds to conspiratorially uh, act with the members of the public who disagreed with what I said to in first place bring me before the court because it foregoes impartiality jurisdiction because guards have no jurisdiction in the civil court and presumption of innocence. So uh, section 113 of the Criminal Justice Public Order Act must not be ignored in this because it facilitates the bringing of a person before the court. If they couldn't bring me before the civil court, none of this would have happened. So anyway, I was, one thing led to another, I was arrested for continuing to preach, even though I had reasonable excuse, as, as, it, now, as it is now seen, that I did have reasonable excuse because the High Court of Ireland have quashed the convictions which says that I was, I did have a reasonable excuse. So the district court wasn't only remiss in one area, it must be remiss in all areas and therefore all legislations that are involved and facilitated such remiss activity must be called into question in order for the High Court to properly and comprehensively um, address the entirety of which legislations contribute to this unlawful behaviour by courts. You can only say that it's unlawful behaviour if a person at the end of it has been told that their convictions are quashed. You cannot extrapolate anything else. To say that, the, that the, it still remains an open question is not true because if the person is, according to the law, entitled to engage in their full spectrum of rights after having been tested in the High Court under judicial review. But the, judi the judge was remiss. That's what's meant by a judicial review. The judge didn't act appropriately according to the law, whatever way you look at it. Now, what wasn't said, and they're just continuing to be vague, is why the judge didn't act according to the law specifically. And he couldn't have done this if the legislations under which I was brought before the court hadn't afforded him the opportunity. Therefore, every legislation that was involved or taken into account or facilitated this day in court 
and were um, on this occasion considered by the district court and all things considered under those legislations, then those legislations must be called into question. What I want to say to you is that it was part of the High Court schedule initially to test the constitutionality of the legislations, Section 115 and Section 117 of the Criminal Justice Public Order Act. It was my knowledge that Section 7 would also be tested. I also called for Section 113 to be tested, but was told that Section 113 didn't need to be tested because if Section 115 was found to be unconstitutional, that that would automatically impact Section 113. because they're all tied together. Now I was told that in other jurisdictions elsewhere in the world, very similar wordings to Section 7 of the Criminal Justice Public Order Act 1994 have been um, found to be too vague when they say that material leading to insult can be considered a breach of the peace, when insult is something that is so subjective. Somebody can be insulted by anything. And you cannot have people so easily offended by subject matter and at the same time afford everybody the right to um, express their opinions and beliefs. So that there was a conflict and that this insulting term being used in a lawful uh, capacity is a new thing and therefore must be unconstitutional. If it encroaches on a person's right to express their opinions and beliefs. So to leave Section 7 out of testing the constitutionality of those uh, of it from the High Court proceeding was remiss, especially when other jurisdictions have tested it and found that it is too vague and offends the, the, the standards of law in Western society. Presumption of innocence. Uh, is affected by section 115 and section 117 and section 113. Jurisdiction is affected by section 113. You see, the point is, if they could never bring me before the court, which is afforded actually by section 113, section 115 and section 117 would have no purchase or traction. So really the matter here is not just section 115 and 117, it's every section under which they attempted to criminalize me in a civil jurisdiction and in a criminal one. So they're all relevant to one another, especially when the, ju the judicial review um, was on the basis of all the aforementioned sections. It could never have come about if it was not for section 113, which purports to afford a guard of the right to give you an adult behaviour warning. If I'm not mistaken, I'll just check, double check that. So it's section 113 of the Criminal Justice Public Order Act. I'm going to read that for you now. Yeah, so it is. Civil proceedings in relation to antisocial behaviour. So it is that section. 113, in this part, behaviour warning has the meaning assigned to it under section 114. So section 114 then must be called into question because there's a definition there. Do you see how it, it's not satisfactory to deal with only certain aspects of the Criminal Justice Public Order Act if they are tied into other areas of that act? The areas that they're tied into must be tested along with them, especially when that includes definitions. It would be remiss, it would be lacking to test in testing the constitutionality of a section, if you didn't test all of the sections it was attached to, especially the ones it, draw its, it drew its meaning or definitions from, you wouldn't be comprehensively testing those sections. But irrespective of all of that, because my um, convictions were quashed, it automatically says that the at least the manner in which the sections were hewed, used was unlawful. Yet, the way the conclusion was worded says that the sections are unlawful. The conclusion of the judge, which I will make available um, below in the description of this video. Or 
um, which I have made available on my Facebook page if you're watching this there. You just have to scroll down and you'll find it in the in a historic post. Section 7 of the Criminal Justice Public Order Act. I'm the first person to ever be convicted to a prison sentence under Section 7 of the Criminal Justice Public Order Act. The Criminal Justice Pub Section 7 of the Criminal Justice Public Order Act is brought into effect under the spirit of the Intoxicating Liquor Act. And so that's supposed to be uh, in operation between 12 midnight and the early hours of the morning, I think it's 6 a.m., which says that they're targeting people coming out of pubs and nightclubs because it's under the Intoxicating Liquor Act, not preachers on the street. So it shouldn't take any large amount of time of the High Court to uh, see that Section 7 was firstly inappropriately used. It's not for, uh, you know, controlling preachers on the street. It's, it's put in place for uh, to order drunks and to give guards some sort of ability to usher them late at night. But it's, it's, it's not, um, surely not, supposed to be anything to do with uh, whether somebody was insulted or not. That's ridiculous. Because that, that depends on subjectivity. And then not only do you, do you start talking about, I was insulted by that, but you start talking about that in the middle of the day when somebody's heralding in a non-abusive, non-aggressive, non-violent manner. Just lawfully... Uh, abiding a peace a peaceable member of society engaging in their full spectrum of rights now it shouldn't take very long if a guard can't arrest you for what you're doing that you shouldn't be criminalized for it that shouldn't take very long at high court level and it shouldn't take very long at high court level to say guard you've no jurisdiction in the civil court you can't give a guard jurisdiction in the civil court to conspire with members of the public on the basis of prima facie evidence you weren't there to witness and then give them the right to prosecute on behalf of those people who gave them the... That's ridiculous. They shouldn't even be able to bring somebody into the court because they're guards. They shouldn't be able to bring anybody into a civil, uh, civil court, that is. Of course, a criminal court, yes. But they couldn't arrest me. I have it on video time after time. Now, we can't arrest you, but people are starting to complain. People can complain all day long if they want to. That's part of their freedoms. But what they can't do is impose on another person's freedom to do what is actually recognised by the Irish Constitution in its preamble as an obligation of an Irishman. It says in the preamble of the Irish Constitution, we the people of error humbly acknowledging all our obligations to our divine Lord Jesus Christ. And then there's a guard in the court's using the name Jesus Christ against me as evidence? That's a mockery of our constitution. That should be immediately acknowledged by the High Court of Ireland. But they abandoned the testing of the constitutionality of the sections under which I was said to have been convicted and brought into the civil court in the first place midway. through what they were supposed to be doing. And they favoured a judicial review and abandoned the testing of the constitutionality of those sections. Now it has said underneath, it remains an open question. How can it possibly remain an open question? For in an appropriate case, how is there a more appropriate case than when you have somebody who has been affected by the misuse of those sections? How is there a more appropriate case? You have context, you have an individual whose life has been affected, harmed, took a month in prison, two years unable, under threat of imprisonment, under duress, um, um, unable to avail of the full spectrum of their rights as an Irish person. That's harassment. That is effectively detainment. That's immurity. That's incarceration. That is a form of imprisonment and outcast and exile. 
it's in a hideous act by our government because they have afforded these legislations it goes against the universal declaration of independence sorry uh, universal declaration what is it i just get the bit sorry the universal declaration of human rights it goes against them goes against the UN Convention, it goes against the Irish Constitution, it goes against so many different platforms that I don't accept that the Irish High Court need another appropriate, more appropriate case. This should be plain, and I'm going to read it for you. I don't want to make this video too long because I do want people to engage it and watch it fully through, so maybe 30 minutes. This is personal rights, Article 40. All citizens shall, as human persons, be held equal before the law. This shall not be held to mean that the state shall not, in its enactments, have due regard to differences of capacity, physical and moral, and of social function. Now, I've noticed that, that's for a little bit later in the video, the state guarantees in its laws to respect, and as far as practic practicable, um, by its laws, to defend and vindicate the personal rights of the citizen. The state shall in particular by its laws protect as best it may from unjust attack and in the case of injustice done vindicate the life person good name and property rights of every person now this hasn't been um stated by the judge at least i haven't read it in the conclusions now it may have been alluded to but certainly an exact measure hasn't been spoken as to how they would vindicate uh, the good name and property rights in, uh, in this case, vindicate the life, person, good name, um, in this case, hasn't been shown. The dwelling of every citizen is inviolable and shall not be forcibly entered, save in accordance with law. Now, there might be a period where you have to wait, but still, it shouldn't that have been mentioned in the conclusion? No citizen shall be deprived of his personal liberty save in accordance with law. Well, clearly, I was deprived of my personal liberty and it wasn't in accordance with law. So that was that was actually breaking the law. That has been shown by the High Court that the law was broken. It's no small matter. They can't run away from it. The law was seriously broken personal rights of the Irish citizen and they knew what they were doing this went on for years they had plenty of time to look back at this plenty they kicked it down the road and kicked it down the road and there were submissions being made and revisions and kicking it down the road again and again and again what was it to do use up the full two years ban they did more than that. They went beyond the 24 months of the length of the civil order. This is crookedness. And when I put in for an adjournment in the court where I was appealing, in the circuit court where I was appealing the initial decision, there was an adjournment requested to have the constitutionality of the section tested. Like, the basis of the, the, basis of the adjournment was that the constitutionality of the sections would be tested the judge in the in the circuit court said i would like to hear what the high court has to say about the constitutionality of these sections so that the appeal was on the basis of the legislations being tested or sorry the adjournment on the appeal But they abandoned the schedule in the High Court. But they were still able to show that the way I was treated was unlawful, even without testing those legislations. Which should automatically tell you that the legislations are unlawful. Do you understand the point I'm making to you? It should tell you straight away that's unlawful I'm expressing this because and I'm stressing it because 
or emphasize would be a better word, because it's so important to recognize that there's an active level of oppression occurring against Christians in society. And it has become like an um, like a mob. They have tried to give access to the civil court to a mob. It's ochlocratic. It's conspiratorial. It's a guard operating outside of his jurisdiction. It's a guard coming and telling you to desist from something that is otherwise perfectly lawful on the basis that somebody made a complaint. So he's foregoing presumption of innocence because he's arriving at you telling you you, you should desist. He doesn't have an order to force you to desist. He's just saying you should desist. I, I didn't ask him for his advice. We pay him to, hold, to uphold the law. Not to give us advice. Out of behaviour warning, you should probably, here's a little warning for you, you should probably desist from this action. Are you arresting me, guard? No, I'm not arresting you. You're not doing anything that I can arrest you for. Well, then why are you handing me pieces of paper? Are you summonsing me? No, no, no. This is a warning. A warning for what? Well, I'm not in secondary school. Like you're getting a progress sheet. I've either broken the law or I haven't. And why are you coming here on the basis of a complaint of a member of the public in a civil aptitude? You can't arrest me, but you're going away to the station to print out pieces of paper that say adult behaviour warning on the top when it's not founded in the law. You're a guard. Your job is to uphold the law, not be a go-between I'm going to side with Anne, John and Didi because they're here for yonks. So I'm going to side with them and conspire with them. And if I give you enough of these and you don't go away, then I'm going to bring you into the civil court where I don't have jurisdiction and I'm going to try to prosecute you as though I was a lawyer. In a civil jurisdiction. That is so confused and such a misuse of law and the courts that it should be immediately thrown out by the high court that they should be immediately removed because they offend the fundaments of law the very rudimentary building blocks of law you start to undo them you're saying that if Anne and Mary and John the mob have a disagreement with any single member of society all of the things and parameters and uh, provisions in place to protect them suddenly disappear. At least they can do for two years and then be brought before the High Court. So we've pretty much oppressed you for two years under threat of arrest or duress. And so you could be imprisoned for two years or for as long as it takes for this to get to the High Court. That can't be allowed to continue, especially when it's already been shown that the convictions should be quashed. So it would be now remiss of the High Court not only to fail to test and find the, the sections unconstitutional and explain to the public why, but it would be remiss not to call into question section 114 and 113 and section 7 of the Criminal Justice Public Order Act, which something was quashed under as well. Something that was quashed that arise on the basis of section 7 was quashed. Therefore meaning sections something wrong with section 7 in that usage. Specifically the word insulting. Because they're saying that something biblical, something that can be cited and founded in the Bible could be deemed as a member of the public as insulting and therefore should result in the criminalization and imprisonment of the individual who sub was subjectively found to be offending even though they can't be shown to be offending according to the law and that's why the convictions were quashed you see it's unavoidable the, the corollaries and extensions that move out from the quashing of the convictions automatically um, reach section 114 section 113 section 115 section 117 section 7 so it's 
it's remiss to say that only section 115 and 117 should be tested now as a result of the question of the convictions it's natural that section 114 113 115 and 117 of the uh, criminal justice public order act i think it's 2006 and section 7 of the criminal justice public order Public Order Act 1994 should be called into question and tested before the High Court. It would be remiss not to do so because you wouldn't be comprehensively testing them. Why? The behaviour warning has the meaning assigned to it under Section 114. So how can you test anything to do with the behaviour warning? Because you have to first test, is a behaviour warning constitutional? If a behaviour warning is not constitutional, then everything that comes out of a behaviour warning is unconstitutional. So you test the root, you expose the root of something first. If you don't test the root of something, how can you know if it's actually grounded in the constitution? Because something's joined by the root. So the root of something is its definition. And does that definition offend the rudiments of law? Well, we find that a guard operating out of his jurisdiction does. We find that foregoing the presumption of innocence does. We find that um, a lack of impartiality or partiality towards a mob-like conspiratorial gathering against a preacher does, or any individual heralding on the street. Unless, of course, the material was found to be obscene, in which case it would be an arrestable offence. And you wouldn't need to go anywhere near the civil court. You'd go straight to the criminal court. But obscenity has a definition. And expressing your opinions around homosexuality, abortion, uh, gender fluidity, whilst it might go against somebody's community standards. Community standards don't instruct law. They can't. Harmlessness has to and reasonableness have to. So it's unreasonable to think that if um, same-sex marriages were deemed lawful by the state, under referendum that suddenly simply because they came in uh, under referendum that we can no longer discuss them because then you're saying you're only a democracy till you decide what we want you to based on what we've been pumping into your mind through the media and once you've done that then uh, we're no longer a democracy you can't talk about or test those ideas anymore just stop talking about them okay because we have you where we want you that shows that you've been manipulated into a position they want to keep you in now sort of like corralling cattle into a pen then you close the gate. So they're trying to effectively close the gate by denying people the opportunity to speak about these issues anymore, but still say you have democracy. How do I have democracy if I can't actually access the discussion publicly? So to assist people to understand that there is more than one view on this and that we don't have to just fall into what the narrative or the rhetoric of the government is. The convincing language through media pumped out for years and years and years and from when you're this height to when you're an adult, then when you're an adult you think, you don't know this stuff? You don't know that it's okay now to have same-sex marriages and things? But it wasn't, years ago it was considered unlawful. So I'm of, I'm of that of opinion and I can still express it or can I not can I no longer question of course I can it says in it says in the um, in this section here that I can it says the right of the citizens to express freely their convictions and opinions that's article 40 the education of public opinion however being a matter of such grave import to the common good the state shall endeavor to ensure that organs of public opinion such as the radio the press the cinema while preserving their rightful liberty of expression, including criticism of government policy. So that's that, does that ex extend to the press, but not to the citizen? Well, this is esque elevating press above citizen. We're all equal before the law. We are all to be held equal before the law. Whether you drive a, a banger or a new Merc. Whether you live in a terrace house in a poor area or some of the most um, expensive mansions in Dublin, near the coast. It shouldn't matter. You should have the same access to the same law. 
the same access to the same rights, the same provisions, the same platform upon which to express your opinions and beliefs. Money has nothing to do with that. It shouldn't. Otherwise, all they'd have to do is impoverish you in order to keep you quiet. So we see that if something um, has been, something that arised or was said to have arised um, or taken on a criminal um, value so that preaching the gospel of Jesus in the streets, when the Bible says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to the whole creation, and in the Irish preamble, it says, we the people of error humbly acknowledging all our obligations to our divine Lord Jesus Christ. How can I humbly acknowledge all my obligations and not go ye into um, the highways and byways, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to the whole creation? It can't be both. How can I have a uh, freedom to express my opinions and beliefs, but if somebody's insulted by it, suddenly I can go to jail? It can't be both. So these sections under the Criminal Justice Public Order Act call into question preaching as an antisocial behaviour when it's fundamental to democracy to be able to express your worldview. They purport, they say, yeah, yeah, we're democratic, yeah, yeah, you have your, we can't arrest you. So they've tried the back door through the civil court. But it wasn't the case that nobody was looking. Significant or persistent alarm, distress, fear or intimidation. The preaching of the gospel. Why is the preaching of the gospel on a daily basis considered persistent alarm when the preaching of the gospel is an obligation? Why is selling clothes more important than the preaching of the gospel? Why is that prioritised over the preaching of the gospel? Why is selling beer and setting up a beer garden prioritised over the preaching of the gospel if both are to have the same platform in society? The public square is for public use, not for a pub. It's not a beer garden, it's a public square. They give out. But the preaching was taken over the square, then the pub did. And it was tables reserved for customers only. It took up the whole square, reserved for customers only. A public space. Our patrons of a, pu of a, of a pub, the public now, they're the only ones considered the public. Oh no, you have a bench over there and a bench over there can be used for the public. These tables though and these chairs, these are reserved for customers only. Oh, so you've this much room now if you're not a customer to lick your ice cream. And you can blare music from the, from the rooftops up there out into the square any type you want, promoting all sorts of satanic principles in society. Girls run the world you know, twerky videos and pop culture and mainstream music. But if a preacher goes out and sings a hymn with the name Jesus Christ in it, the guard, the member of a guard of is going to present before this before the court of Ireland and as and use this as evidence against him. Not only this, but a scripture from the Holy Bible as evidence against a preacher, specifically Leviticus. A man shall not lie with a man again with with a man as with a woman for it is an abomination. That's, that's, that's what they're now communicating to you. Preachers, uh, guards, conflict, problem. Preachers, uh, local business people, problem. They'll conspire. Guards can bring you to the civil court out of their jurisdiction. Now they're given some powers outside of Western society that contradict the fundamental and rudimentary structures of law in Western society. Now guards can do something else. It's against the law. They're breaking the law. The guards are breaking the law, conspiring with members of the public to criminalise another one. Then fulfilling that criminality by actually following through and arresting the person. 
they didn't just make a mistake. They went about arresting a person on the basis of them having tried to prevent them from doing something that they couldn't arrest them for. So they knew what they were doing, didn't go with their brief and with their office. They don't have jurisdiction in, the, in a civil uh, court. They know that. That's fundamental to their office. They know that they can't stop you from doing engaging your activity if you're not actually breaking the law, unless they have reasonable suspicion. But they basically have this sheet, this form, this adult behaviour warning, and they're saying that Base, on the basis alone of prima facie evidence, a complaint made by a member of the public over here who runs a business, you're now no longer allowed your full spectrum of rights. We're going to ask you to desist from them. Even though we can't arrest you for what you're doing, you now lo no longer have your full spectrum of, of human rights, okay? Yeah, there you go. No, I don't want that. Why? I'm not going to contract with you on this basis. I don't recognize you as behaving lawfully right now. I don't see you as operating in your office. Therefore, I will not um, aid and abet criminal behavior by taking that behavior warning away. To the point where I told the guard when he put something on the ground, you're littering now. I didn't know that he, had, he intended to pick it back up. He was using it as a sort of table to organize his forms. I thought he was gonna leave that there for me to collect. And I was telling him, you're littering now, making him aware that I'm not going to be, to be collecting that, so that's as good as rubbish. Because there, he had no lawful jurisdiction to do that. Because the legislations he's purporting to be able to do that under go against the fundamental rights of a human being, recognised further afield than Ireland. It also says in Article 44 of the Irish Constitution, the state acknowledges that the homage of public worship is due to Almighty God. It shall hold his name in reverence and shall respect and honour religion. Freedom of conscience and the free profession and practice of religion are subject to public order and morality guaranteed to every citizen. Well, in Ireland, we recognise that the Christian Bible is the, the framework, the grounding, a foundation when it comes to public order and morality. We do that in our preamble says in the name of the most holy trinity from and to whom as our final end all actions both of men and states must be referred so we know that true morality and true social order as defined by the irish constitution is not offended by christianity but is rather facilitated by its moral um, values for thousands of years so why suddenly after the advent of this ramping up of media, Netflix and all you can eat data and all of this stuff, suddenly is what was considered by fundamental to the integrity of society being eroded and attacked with such aggression, vehemence. Well, it's simply because there's, they're trying to cause and effect a breakdown of society at a fundamental rudimentary level so that they can attack the foundation of society and lead people into greater degrees of deception. But it goes against the law on a very fundamental level. And I've, I've, I've exemplified that for you today. Article 40, Article 44. The right of the citizen to assemble um, and peaceably and without arms. Provision may be made by law to prevent or control meetings which are determined in accordance with the law to be calculated cause a breach of the peace or to be a danger or nuisance to the general public and to prevent or control meetings in the vicinity of either house of the Oireachtas. Now a danger means the potential for violence um, by those assembling. So the people who are assembling might be a violent assembly. So the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 1, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. So people in general, the general public should actually uphold and promote and encourage my rights to preach the gospel. Article 2, everyone is entitled to all the rights and freedoms set forth in this declaration. Everyone. 
without distinction of any kind, such as race, colour, sex, language, religion, political or other opinion, whether it's on the basis of same-sex marriage or abortion or any area, there's no area too taboo to talk about in public. None. There simply isn't. According to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in the Irish Constitution. If it's something that there's a referendum brought for, it's not an untouchable subject matter in public forum. That's very dangerous ground. Because you're saying once we've made our vote and once we've made our decision, you can no longer touch that area, revisit it, talk about it in public, nothing. So you're a democracy until we get what we want and then your democracy stops. That's what they're saying. No one shall be subjected to arbitrary arrest, detention or exile. That's pretty much what I went through, Article 99. No one shall be subject to arbitrary arrest. It's arbitrary. They had no grounds, which has been proven in the High Court. Detention, detained for a month in prison. And on other occasions in the cell, awaiting court. Or exile, pretty much I've been exiled. They've tarnished my name in the community. I was in the newspaper, libeled, slandered. That's just what they've done. Article 16, one men and women of full age without any limitation due to race, nationality or religion have the right to marry and to be found a fam to found a family. They're entitled to equal rights as to marriage during marriage and at its dissolution. The family is the natural fundamental group unit of society and is entitled to protection by society and the state. So why are they killing the baby in the womb if society and the state are supposed to protect the life of the baby. When the right to life is one that is imprescriptible, which means it cannot be removed by referendum. An imprescriptible right cannot be voted away because it's self-evident and pre-existed any government. You can't take away what you didn't give. Article 18, everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience and religion. This right includes freedom to change his religion or belief and freedom either alone or in community with others and in public or private to manifest his religion or belief in teaching, practice, worship and observance. Teaching, practice, worship and observance. Article 19, everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. This right includes freedom to hold opinions, very important, without interference and to seek, receive and impart information of, a, of any kind, so long as it's not obscene, and ideas through any media, it's a banner, it's a, it's a song, it's a, vo it's a voice presentation, it's a, uh, a video, it's a, a painting, it's anything. Receive and impart information and ideas through any media and regardless of frontiers. Now, if the material becomes obscene, then it doesn't matter the, ma the medium used to communicate it, it should cease. But we're not seeing that. We're seeing the Pride March bringing old men with their genitalia hanging out walking down through the main street or women twerking and doing what is normally in strip clubs out in the middle of the main street there uh, in front of babies and young children, families. It's obscene, yet they're not arresting people. So they're trying to reinforce these messages that preachers uh, go to jail, have their lives harassed. Strippers, no, they're fine. We won't arrest them. They can go up and down the main street. So they're, they're constantly trying to send these messages and normalise this behaviour in society. Article 21, but they do it gradually, slowly, slowly, surely. And everyone has the right to freedom of peaceful assembly and association. UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, because often people would say to me, well, you're, you're discussing abortion and there are children around. Well, if, if it's not a, a ma subject matter to be discussed in principle and moral value in public forum something's wrong something's very wrong if you can't discuss that in public women discuss their periods in public um, men discuss all sorts of things in public um, and they should feel okay so long to do so so long as they're not being uh, uh, obscene about it 
discretion. Yes, agreed. There are certain subjects where you require discretion. But when the media is being used, grossly misused, to miseducate the masses and at the same time tell people they can't talk about it in public, that is a misuse. Because you turn on the radio, they're discussing abortion. But you can't talk about it in the main square. Problem. Both are public. Both are daytime viewing and hearing, listening. Why exclude it from the public square but not the radio stations? And why only exclude it when you got your way by referendum? Why then does suddenly democracy and all of its uh, implications cease? Hypocrites. They're only about getting their own agenda. By the way, it says here, UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, Article 14, states parties shall respect the right of the child to freedom of thought, conscience and religion. They cannot, a parent cannot impose their opinions on the child and say you must conform to this all throughout your childhood and your life. Whilst the parent can choose the, the faith of the child, they can't impose um, they can't impose the child's partaking or agreeing with those views. Do you see the point? So the, so the, the parent can choose the faith of the child. This is the parent's household. But the child can be in the parent's household, be practicing the faith and not have true belief in their heart of that faith. The conscience, the expression of that conscience isn't removed from the child. They can say, no, I don't. I'm not Christian. They can do that. But it's no imposition by the parent to say that I'm going to bring you up in the ways of the Lord because the child is in the parent's household. They're a dependent. So the child, until they come of age, must submit to the conditions of living in that household. And even if there's not a genuine belief, they must adhere to what has been valued by Western society as rudimentary requirements and prerequisites to true social order. This is not new. It's been exemplified for thousands of years. We see that Christian values lead to peaceful society. The abandonment of them lead to destruction. Even in the immediate. Even in the immediate uh, and temporal um, reality, we can see that the negative fallout from not complying with what are Christian moral values is harm to with um, an impact in many people's lives, not just the one committing the harm. So there's a negative fallout, there's a negative knock-on effect, negative ramifications that reach more than the person committing the harm and inflicting it upon that person, in that a person who has an abortion, they carry that trauma throughout their whole life and therefore everybody they engage with, therefore, is impacted by their trauma. So harm has that nature. It has a negative knock-on effect which increases and is sustained. So we see that the Christian moral values of our Irish society are enshrined in the Constitution. It's not merely the preamble. It's not merely an association with Christianity. It's not. It's surely not an association with the Catholic Church because the Catholic Church aren't in the preamble of the Irish Constitution. Recognition of the God of the Bible is. And that's not a natural um, association. It's because the Roman Catholic Church don't actually obey the Bible in its commands. Ritualistically, ceremonially, ceremonially, allegorically, they don't obey the, the commands of the Bible. So I just want to check how much time is in this video. So it's gone up to 50 minutes. Time goes quick. It's a lot of material to cover. So what, what do we see? Well, we see that they've abandoned in the High Court, they've abandoned the tests in the sections 115, 117. They did it midway. I wasn't informed. This is a matter of public interest. People weren't informed. 
It wasn't in the newspaper, but I was called a homophobic racist in the newspaper. But that wasn't in the newspaper. They were abandoning, abandoning the testing of the constitutionality of those sections. Even though the adjournment to the circuit court was on the basis that they were testing the constitutionality of the sections. This is a total misuse of the system. It's total abuse of it. The conditions of the adjournment said that I didn't only have to cease preaching in Wexford Town now, but the entire county of Wexford. That's not a good idea. You're testing the constitutionality of the sections. They're being called into question. And you want to extend the impositions to the entire county instead of just one town? Your position is exposed. It's one of an anti-Christian position. You're trying to prevent the person from engaging and tra traveling to the to other areas now as well as your own town so it wasn't merely the people around the bull ring that you were trying to prevent hearing what i was about to preach and this is exemplified by your trying to prevent me from preaching in the entire county of wexford why not wexford waterford and the whole of ireland Were they going to take my tongue out by the root next? They could. Do you see what I'm saying? Because when you start to impose, you can't speak in Wexford now, the entire county as well, on, as a condition of your adjournment. Hold on a second. You want to move to engaging greater impositions than the court did themselves as condition of an adjournment you've already you've already shown that this appeal is not one of a genuine nature because the appeal is to test whether those impositions were right in the first place and awaiting this appeal you want to say we should already impose greater impositions greater preventions so what value would the appeal have if the judge is already giving the opposition the right to make the conditions of the adjournment? The judge is basically handing the ruling over to the, to the opposition. And saying, you make the conditions of the adjournment now. So abandoning court process. So all the way along, they have been showing we don't value court proceedings. We don't value your rights as an individual. We don't value anything of Ireland. We don't value the Constitution. Now they're in the High Court. They don't value the testing of the constitutionality of those sections when they have context and when there has actually been somebody affected by them. They think there's a more appropriate case to have for them. Is that to take them out and isolate them from any real grounding? Or just to kick it down the road some more and see what happens? Which is it? Because the powers instituted on this earth are instituted by God Most High and not um, judges of the High Court. It is the, the role of the judge of the High Court to test the constitutionality of those sections. What, what I'm questioning is how can a judge of the High Court consider the convictions to be unlawful and not the sections? How can a judge of the High Court quash the conviction under section 7 and not call section 7 into question how can the judge of the high court say that it is um still an open question that would need an appropriate case and that that should be uh, sought but leave out section 113 section 114 and all of the other sections which ground section 115 and 117 it would be remiss not to comprehensively I view them all.
because section 113 relies on section 114 for its very definition. And it says, sub subject to subsection 5, a member of the Garda Shikana may issue a behaviour warning to a person who has behaved in an antisocial manner. So you've asked the guard to be judge, jury and executioner on ascertaining as to whether a person has behaved in an antisocial manner. So before they get to court, the judge must agree or he has no jurisdiction. The case has no value. You've already decided. You've given the, the guard judge, jury and executioner power outside of court on the basis of prima facie evidence, which is nothing more than what Anne or Mary said. So the guard is holding court on the side of the street in a jurisdiction where he's not actually allowed to by law, civil. So it's no surprise that they don't want to touch 114 or 113 because they're exposed in them. How can a member of Angarda Shiakana deem something antisocial all on his own? When it, when it, and issue something on to prevent somebody engaging in their rights. So the guard is actually deciding on the side of the street, you've behaved in an antisocial manner even though I wasn't here. It's on the basis of what she said. I'll agree with her. Now the, judge is con now the guard is conspiring with her. He's conspiring with her on the basis of hearsay. He's now making a ruling, judge, jury, executioner, foregoing presumption of innocence, that I've behaved in an antisocial manner. Then he's conspiring with every other guard who shows up thereafter because they have to assume that the guard prior to them who issued a behaviour warning was correct in his assessment as to whether antisocial behaviour had been partaken of. So in the absence of one another, they're conspiring together with a sort of a mob-like uh, few people and then they collect those people together, corral them together, get them into the civil court to attack the good name of this person, this other person. This is not lawful. This is a mockery of law. This is a mockery of Ireland. It's a mockery of Western society. 113, 114, 115 and 117, Section 7 of the Criminal Justice Public Order Act, both 1994 and 2006, must be removed. They must be. Because you need a guard to effectively hold court on the side of the street so he can go and get headed paper that tells you you have to stop doing something that's otherwise not an arrestable offence. He's out of jurisdiction. He's operating as a judge on the side of the street. He's foregoing presumption of innocence. He's showing partiality to the complainant. He's not engaging in Irish society. He's rogue. The behaviour warning may be issued orally or in writing. And if it is issued or orally, it shall be recorded in writing as soon as reasonably practicable. And a written record of the behaviour warning shall be served on the person personally or by post. It's harassment. You're now targeting individuals of the, of members of the public outside of the law. It's a mob. The behaviour warning or, if it is given orally, the written record of it shall include a statement that the person has behaved in an shall include a statement from who that, that the person has behaved in an antisocial manner and indicate what the behavior is and when and where it took place but the guard is only arriving and he's giving the behavior warning on foot of a complaint he can't ascertain as to whether what the what the complainant is saying is true or not because he wasn't there Demand that the person cease the behaviour. Demand that the person cease the behaviour. But he wasn't there to witness the behaviour. 
And if the behaviour isn't an arrestable offence, which the guard has said time and time again, recorded on video, then why is the guard then now assuming that you have behaved in an antisocial manner? And why is the court avoiding giving any definition as to what the court sees as an antisocial behaviour manner? Or a behaviour in an antisocial manner? So do you see how many how many breaches of law are occurring here in the office of a guard? Demand that the person cease the behaviour or otherwise address the behaviour in the manner specified in the warning. And include that failure to comply with the demand under paragraph B or issuance of a subsequent behaviour warning. Another one may result in an application being made for a civil order. So now let's back up. On the basis of a complaint from a member of the public, even though the guard wasn't present, he's held court on the side of the street to decide whether what happened was antisocial or not, even though he's only going on prima facie evidence. He's holding court on the side of the street. Somebody might say, well, the guard has to make decisions. Not on the basis of prima facie evidence on the side of the street. To such an extent where he can tell somebody to desist from what, is, from what is otherwise perfectly lawful and constitutionally protected activity. That's huge. That's not something small. That's completely denying the, the laws of the land. Every right, it offends on so many levels that the High Court should have immediately recognised that needs to be torn out. Failure to comply with the demand under paragraph B or issuance of a subsequent behaviour warning may result in an application being made for a civil order by a guard. He's no jurisdiction. The member of the guard, as she O'Connor referred to in the subject, may require the person to give his or her name and address to the member for purposes of behaviour warning or the written record of it. Now you're being harassed. Give me your details. I'm just preaching here. Yeah, but she said. In the cease of persistent behaviour, the most recent known instance of the behaviour took place. The behaviour took place, I don't know. Sorry, I've lost a bit of context. Behaviour warning may not be issued more than one month after the time that behaviour took place, or in the case of persistent behaviour, the most recent behaviour instance of that recent known instance of that behaviour took place. So they're saying it must, you must be done in, uh, it must be issued in a month since it, it happened or has uh, known to have happened. They're not even, they're foregoing due process of law here. Uh, the judge did say that. But how can you say that then and not automatically consider section 115 and 117 unconstitutional in their wording? You must arrive at that. But why did they abandon that proceeding when the adjournment of the circuit court was on the basis of that? Or at least that's how it was communicated to me in the court. Subject to subsection 7, a behaviour warning remains in force against the person to whom it is issued for three months from the date that it is issued. Also, I want to call to your attention that section 7 has been um, mirrored or mimicked or copied in many uh, countries of the Western society including the US, the United States of America. In the United States of America, they have removed the word insulting from that legislation. And I think it might be the case that it has occurred in England. One or the two or, two, or, or both. One of the two or both. So either England and America or both. They have removed the word insulting from Section 7 or, or very similarly formulated uh, additional legislation or amendment. Because it's too subjective and too vague why has that been left out? Doesn't Ireland keep up with things in other countries of the Western world, especially the High Court? Why would they skip that when I was actually convicted under that section? Why would they skip the testing of that, the wording of it, and comparing it to the Constitution? You see, addressing those issues so to arrive at a quashing of the offence and failing to then later address those sections under which the person was convicted initially 
is remiss of the High Court. They should be testing the constitutionality of those sections if they find that the conviction should be quashed. If they find that those sections are allowing for misuse or offending of the fundamental precepts of law. Subject to subsection 7, the behaviour warning remains in force against the person to whom it is issued for three months from the date that it is issued. So they're saying, this is going to last for three months. So they're basically saying, you, you better desist from preaching for three months here on, on the basis of Anne's complaint. Forgoing presumption of innocence, foregoing impartiality, foregoing due process of law, they're telling you to cease a constitutionally protected activity and have declared it antisocial on the basis of prima facie evidence from a complainant nearby, who for three years previously made no complaint, but suddenly now is. If an application is made under section 115 in respect of the person, the behaviour warning remains in force against the person until the application is heard or otherwise determined by the district court. The behaviour warning remains in force. That should, set, that should tell you all you need. What force does it have? That should tell you all you need to know. What force does the behaviour warning have now? It's only asking you to desist of a behaviour, but not specifying what the behaviour is, and saying at the same time that it's antisocial, but not arresting you, and telling you that it's on the basis of a complaint made. That's a complete abomination before the Irish Constitution. It's abhorrent. It's an abandonment of the office of a guard. It's an abandonment of the office of a judge. It mocks Western society and the fundamental precepts of law. It mocks, it mo mocks true social order. It mocks anybody who ever thought that they were dying for such freedoms. It mocks them. It mocks them. But yet, we see, still see people lining up for the candid camera moment with the pike man. While they're encouraging the pike man to point the pike now at the babies in the woman's belly, not defend it. They, the pike man has turned on the pregnant woman now and he's pointing the pike at her belly, saying pro-abortion, pro-killing the baby in the womb. Your society has been attacked from so many positions now. And the High Court are saying, this needs an appropriate case. How the High Court haven't said, whoa, this is way out of anything that could be considered constitutional. Pull everything to do with these sections. 113, 115, 114, 117. Pull everything that defines and gives meaning to this, because this is clearly out of order. Pull them. Dum, 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 dum. Now, that could be a, a reason for bringing about a, f a future case because the high court signaled this is far wrong we need another case and we need to include section 7 section 113 section 115 section 117 there would be a reason to bring another day in court so that the whole thing can be comprehensively viewed and i would happily be there to testify Happily, I would be there to testify as a witness as, and state how th those, the misuse of those offended my rights and impacted my life. Happily, for the sake of other people in society, because society needs many good guides. So let us, Irish nation, 
and I'm going to try to break this video down into paragraphs, easily clickable paragraphs, once I review back through it, so that the viewer can see the headings and click on the specific pieces of information that they are most interested in. I haven't actually looked into that yet, but I'll try and I'll try and master that. Hold a minute. So I ask you to not abandon what is Western society, what is true social order, what people have claimed in the past to, to, to have fought and died for, but rather see that God is at the root of true social order, good morality, and that it's his powers instituted on the earth that are the fundamental grounding and skeletal structure, the foundation of what is good constitution or good comp composition of society so that relative peace can ensue. We need, as the Irish people, as people of the earth, whatever your country, your nation is, and we should honour the members of that nation and love everybody in those, including the judge, including the guard, including the pregnant woman, including the man who's aborting the children and say, stop that, stop it, be forgiven, come to the Lord Jesus, put it to bed, it has to stop. It's butchering the babies, it's telling young women, it's getting them when they're most vulnerable and telling them that they should kill their own young because they can't afford to keep them. Yet, at the same time, we need permission from the nuns to build a maternity hospital as one of the wealthiest countries in the world. They're telling the farmers they can't farm and we don't have enough land to build a hospital to birth the babies in. They're giving the farmers checks so that they won't farm their land, but will keep them looking nice and neat and tidy. Subsidiary checks, I think that's what they call them. Not subsidiaries, subsistence. Something along those lines. Subsidiary is a lesser company under an umbrella of a bigger corporation, I think. So you've got all of these sections which should be called into question. Because how can you test section 115 without testing the meaning of behaviour warning? So they all have to be called in. How can the guard decide on his Todd on the side of the street whether what Mary's saying is true, such that he can tell somebody who's other, otherwise uh, engaging in activities that are constitutionally perfectly protected by society, that he's, he must cease and desist from doing what Mary said he did, foregoing due process of law? can't be the case. The Criminal Justice Public Order Act doesn't really pertain to preachers, it pertains to drunks between the hours of 12 and 6 in the morning, 12 midnight to 6 a.m. Yet the preacher is the first person to ever be convicted over it, and people don't smell a rat on that. Come on folks, it's time to wake up. Let the remnant rise. Let people be illuminated by this type of exposure and the tearing down of this type of stronghold. Let the High Court acknowledge and submit to the Constitution of Ireland the powers instituted by Yeshua HaMashiach. Let them recognise the Most Holy Trinity of the Bible. Let us pray for them that they do. Let young women realise that what's in their womb is precious. And just because a man didn't see them as precious doesn't mean that they should carry that on to their child. That, the, that they should stop it with them, that they should stop the murder. They should stop the harm and say, no, this is my baby. And then the government, the state, should recognise and realise their responsibility towards pregnant women and not try to fearmonger them into submitting to uh, the threat of poverty but rather sustain them in their pregnancies. But people might say, well, that would lead to a whole lot of women having babies out of wedlock. Well, then why don't you promote wedlock using the media instead of promiscuity? So do you see how it's all geared towards the abortion? The killing of the baby in the womb? It's murder because the right to life is imprescriptible. It can't be given away. If the Irish Constitution ever recognised the right to life, which it did because it's self-evident, 
But even in 1998, or sorry, 1983, that was recognised as an amendment to the Irish Constitution. It needed no amendment. It needed no recognition. It's a self-evident right to life. But it was acknowledged. Therefore, if the imprescriptible right to life was ever acknowledged by the state, and it was, specifically in 1983, it's still extant because you can't remove an imprescriptible right by referendum. It's preposterous. It can't be given away. Science doesn't disagree with the biblical definition of life. Leviticus 17, 11, the life of the creatures is the blood therein. Secular science will tell you that blood is the transportation system of oxygen throughout the body, which is the breath of life, oxygen to the cell. That's life. So the secular and Christian view on uh, the definition of life are the same. So why is society not reflecting that? They say, follow the science, but then they abandon it. But that's because eugenicists are manipulating the media to bring this deception upon the people, this ignorance upon the people. So it's time to wake up Ireland, be an example to the world on how to properly order society, properly treat your family, properly treat the Colleen Bukali with respect and honour. And if you impregnate a woman, she has enough value to put a roof over her head and put your tea on the table. Does she not? Is she just something to be discarded like your latest pair of trainers or sneakers? It's no surprise you call them sneakers and you're sneaking from bedroom to bedroom. It's time to be men and raise families. Mm -hmm. Turn to your Lord, the risen Lord Jesus, and be saved. Otherwise you'll go to hellfire. There will be brimstone, there will be gnashing of teeth. Gnashing of teeth. It's time to repent and turn to Jesus. To say no to Satan and his principles. To turn away from their rhetorics and agendas. To return to the true church of Jesus Christ. It's time to repent. The High Court needs to recognise and acknowledge the powers instituted by God. They need to recognise the precepts of law. And all legislations have to be corollary of the precepts of law. Because they have to be protected. And maintained, sustained, preserved. They're not doing that. But they need to start. So everything that is a corollary or grounds or founds or gives meaning to or definition to section 115 and 107, section 7 of the Criminal Justice Public Order, everything that was pertaining to my case and interrelates with public order, specifically section 115 and 117, needs to be called into the attention of the court because you can't comprehensively test 115 and 117 without testing all of its grounding sections section 113 section 104 and whatever else is mentioned whatever else gives meaning to section 115 and 117 understand that's how it would be comprehensively tested fully tested tested properly so let them do that let the high court recognize what they must do as the high court if they want to have another day in court well then let them this time comprehensively check the constitutionality of those sections and I'm happy to testify, happy to be present. There's no COVID. They can have a day in court. It can be a matter that's available to the public to see because up until now it hasn't been public knowledge. Yes, you can see it on courts.ie, but if you don't know what's happening, why would you check? So they've let it run cold by kicking it down the road. But they have to address it. And eyes are on the High Court right now. Are they going to uphold the law of the land of Ireland? 
or are they going to attack the foundation of our constitution? And the pike man and everything he represented. Are they still singing the ballads in the pubs but attacking what the pike man fought for? Or claims to have fought for? Blessings. Jesus loves you. Return to him. It's time that the remnant church rise. It's time that we stand for our Lord Jesus. Romans 10.9 says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. In other words, say Jesus is risen, Jesus is Lord. Believe it in your heart and he will save you. Come before it's too late.